Today we're going to be reading the second half of the book, Drinking Cleopatra's Tears. Have you ever gone for a walk in the clouds? Clouds usually form high up in the air. In fact, when clouds form lower down, we don't even call them clouds. We call them fog. Even so, clouds and fog are both made of the same thing, tiny drops of liquid water. These drops form when invisible water vapor cools and condenses into liquid water. Condensation usually happens high off the ground, but every once in a while, it gets cool enough near the ground for water vapor to condense and fog is formed. If you go for a walk in the fog, you are walking through clouds. Have you ever seen clouds made of waves? Sunlight heats water in the ocean and wind blows over the water. The warmth and wind make some of the water evaporate and turn into water vapor. That water vapor mixes with the air, which may rise up higher and get colder. If there's enough water vapor in the air when it cools, the water vapor condenses back into liquid water, forming clouds. That means the water in a cloud above you may have come from an ocean wave. The colder it gets, the more likely water vapor is to condense. As you go higher and higher up in the part of the atmosphere where the weather happens, it gets colder and colder. That's why clouds usually form high up in the sky. Have you ever been hit by a falling piece of cloud? You have if you've ever been out in the rain. Clouds are formed from tiny drops of liquid water, and these drops of water sometimes bump into each other to form bigger drops. If the drops get big enough, they fall to the ground as raindrops. Rain is a kind of precipitation, and so are snow and hail. Precipitation that falls on you used to be part of the clouds. Have you ever shot Niagara Falls out of a squirt gun? After it rains, liquid water flows across the land and fills rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, and waterfalls like Niagara Falls. The water then might get collected, cleaned, and sent through pipes to your home, where you might use it to fill your squirt gun. The water you put in your squirt gun today may have been in Niagara Falls long ago. Did you know that people really can walk on water? When liquid water falls to earth as precipitation, a lot of it soaks into the ground and becomes groundwater. Groundwater is always moving slowly underneath us through tiny spaces in the soil and rocks. If you dig down deep enough, you will find groundwater. So wherever you go, there is groundwater beneath you. Are you brushing your teeth with an iceberg? Earth is much colder near the North Pole and the South Pole than it is on the rest of the planet. It is so cold that lots of water freezes into giant solid blocks of ice. Pieces of these giant blocks of ice fall into the ocean and float. These are icebergs. When icebergs get warmer, they melt into liquid water. The liquid water from the icebergs may evaporate into water vapor in the air. The water vapor might condense into clouds. Then the water might fall as rain and flow across the land. That same water can be collected and cleaned for you to use to brush your teeth. Did you know that the water in one little pond can move all over the planet? Even the water in a quiet pond is always moving and changing. Liquid water everywhere is evaporating to become water vapor in the atmosphere. In the atmosphere, water vapor is condensing into liquid water to form clouds. The water in clouds is moving through the atmosphere and falling as precipitation. Water from precipitation is filling lakes, the ocean, and ponds like this one, becoming surface water. Then the water can evaporate again, and all of this happens over and over. We call this the water cycle. Did you know that you are part of the water cycle? The water that is in your body today has been in many other places. It has been in the ocean, underground, high in the air, and all over Earth's surface. Someday, it will be in those places again. All of that water inside you is part of the water cycle, so you're a part of the water cycle too. This picture shows water moving through the water cycle. Can you find examples of evaporation, condensation, precipitation, and surface water? Do you know where that drop of water has been? It's been in the air, in the ground, in ice, in clouds, and in living things. 
It has evaporated, condensed, fallen as rain, and flowed in rivers. It has frozen and melted over and over again. It has been around since Earth began, and it may even have been in T-Rex spit or Cleopatra's tears.